and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, we're out in this cornfield. Everything looks beautiful, but we're still nervous about what could be yet to come. A problem like Goss's will. We'll talk about what to do with one of the worst diseases you can get in your corn later in the show. Well, speaking of diseases, we'll discuss soybeans and how a fungicide later on can help for disease control and give some other benefits. We'll discuss it. Our weed of the week is a nightmare. I, I know this sounds like a really problemsome show here. It, it is going to be a challenge, but there are answers. We'll give them to you during our weed of the week segment. But first, here comes this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about rain fast times in crops. It's something that farmers have to look at because if they don't, they're going to have problems with the spray that they put on each crop. Well, when farmers are out spraying any number of things, it could be to kill weeds or to control diseases or even insects, they're very concerned about how long it's going to be until it rains. Now, with all of those products, they don't want farmers don't want it to rain for a while until that product has had a chance to either get into the plant or get into the bug and do the job that it's intended to do. Now, if you see rain clouds coming and you're out with your sprayer in your field, uh, a farmer's nervous because he's making a huge investment uh, spraying any of these products to control things and, and help improve his crop. And if those rain clouds are coming pretty quickly, uh, farmers are gonna shut that sprayer down, bring it back to the yard because most products need at least an hour or two before a rain in order for them to do their job. In fact, what farmers will do is look right on the label of just about any product they're going to spray and it will tell them what is the rain fast time. With most products, like Darren says, it's an hour or two. In some cases, like with some of the fungicides, it might be a half a day or it might be six hours. So it's a lot of time and, and the farmer then has to really look at the forecast. But you know what? As farmers, we don't live in a perfect world. We, we might never have 0% chance of rain on any day we're going to spray during the ideal window. Yeah, the other thing that farmers look at is the time of day that they're treating. Farmers aren't going to be able to spray when there's lots of dew on the leaves. When you think about it, those leaves can only hold so much water at any one time. And when we're running through with the sprayer and putting more water droplets on the leaves, uh, sometimes when that leaf is already fully saturated with water, you add another droplet and everything runs off and lands on the ground. So for farmers, they have to be really cautious in the, in the later evening and early morning timings about spraying. Basically, they'll try to avoid it if they're concerned there's going to be some dew there. But the other thing to keep in mind, let's just talk about that evening time spraying. That's going to change the rain fast times for many of the products. Yeah, it is. And the reason why is because, in effect, there's this water that develops on the leaf. And because of all this water, the plant, number one, isn't bringing as much water, as much moisture in as it might during the heat of the day. And the other side of it is, instead of spraying 10 gallons of water per acre with your sprayer along with whatever you are spraying on that product, now you might have a thousand gallons of water per acre out there. So it just takes a lot of time for all that water to get into the plant. In effect, a lot of times instead of a one to two hour rain fast, you might extend that. The farmer may see four hours, six hours, even eight or ten hours for a rain fast time. So that's why a late evening timing for spraying doesn't work out nearly as well in most cases as a morning timing. So the other thing to think about is really humidity, Brian, because if it's really humid, it's going to take longer for things to dry on the leaf or well, if it's cloudy or degree. sunny. I, yeah, I, I don't worry that much about that side of things. What I do worry about, though, is evaporation. Let's say I've got tremendously dry weather and it's in the heat of the day. You know what happens. I mean, it's the same thing like they tell you don't water your lawn in the middle of the day. If you go out and spray, then it's possible that some of that spray could go up in the air and you may be losing it that way. The other thing I was going to mention real quick is just that in terms of this rain fast thing, you can look on the label. Any person can look on the label whether you're spraying out in your field or in your garden or on your lawn. But just a general rule of thumb is as soon as the product has dried onto the leaf, you're usually fairly safe for rain to come. Well, one of those weeds that we're always concerned about making sure everything is perfect so our herbicide works, 
is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. Get the most from the genetic potential in your crops, reduce plant stress, and increase yield. BioForge upregulates key genes to keep roots growing and reduce ethylene for improved plant stress tolerance. BioForge mixes well with other products for easy application with every pass through the field. BioForge, progressive grower's choice to improve root growth, reduce crop stress, and increase yield. Make every growing day count with BioForge from Stoller USA. You can put more bushels in your bin without expanding the farm with Yield Track. The new 24 row planter from Titan Machinery features the Case IH Early Riser Planting System. Yield Track will take you to the field first with extra flotation come spring. The tracks eliminate pinched rows and reduce compaction. All 22 and 30 inch Yield Tracks come loaded with Case IH technology, including cable drive and AccuRow. Grab more bushels from every acre with Yield Track from Titan Machinery. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. Can I grow my crop without the expense of fertilizer additives? You can. Conditions forcing you to make some tough choices? Choose agricultural liquid fertilizers and you won't need stabilizers or nutrient managers, eliminating expense and hassle. Millions of acres and years of replicated research have proven that with ProGerminator, SureK, High Energy and, and MicroLink, you can grow a great crop without costly additives. To learn more and find a dealer near you, visit agroliquid.com. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. I've kind of found it interesting here over the last few years that, you know, even though we never as farmers used to spray fungicide in corn or soybeans or really for that matter even wheat, all of a sudden just about everybody's spraying fungicide and the crop where we feel it's almost a no-brainer type application is in soybeans in the early flowering or the early reproductive stages. Well, I remember talking to my dad about it 25 years ago and I said, Dad, how come the guys raising production seed corn are using fungicides every year but we're not using them in our crops? And dad said, well, the economics just aren't there. The products cost so much and the value of our crop is so low. At that time, corn was like $1.80 a bushel and soybeans were $5 a bushel. And dad said, are we really going to spend $20 or $25 when we've got $1.80 corn? We, we would have to have a huge gain, but in production seed corn, Corn, that's a whole different ball game, whole different set of economics. And now you think about it in your soybean crop, if soybeans are worth 10 to $15 a bushel like they have been in recent years, it doesn't take many bushels of soybeans to pay for a treatment of fungicide. No, because the fungicides really aren't that expensive. It's going to cost about $15 an acre for a full rate. But the other thing is there have been farmers who've been using a half rate. We've done a fair amount of that even in our own operation. And one of the reasons why we've gone with a half rate in some cases is the beans are so small at that point. If we're out there at, let's say R2, that's full flower, usually our beans are maybe two-thirds size, okay, or even half size of what they're going to be eventually. So the way we kind of look at it is if we've got half the overall plant mass, then why wouldn't we use a half rate? If you're in an area of the country that has lots of disease problems, don't get me wrong, I would probably say run out there with the full rate, but in many cases on our farm, we are just running half rate. We've had great success with that. In fact, we've had as high as a 17 bushel side-by-side -side gain. And had you told me, oh, there's no way you can gain 17 bushels, uh, I would have said, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can't do that. 
but we did on our farm. I saw it firsthand. So it's one of those things where, hey, there are a lot of diseases showing up. We are gaining three to five bushels very often. And occasionally we do hit the home run and gain 10, 15, even 17 bushels. Well, I never would have thought we'd have those kind of gains either, Brian, because we don't really have that much disease pressure in our soybeans. Most of the time, most of the time. And that's the thing. Every once in a while, you do get downy mildew, powdery mildew. I mean, there are a number of different diseases. Or white mold. That's the one that well, we've yeah, had but, over the years. But here's the thing with white mold. Then you have to be a little bit more choosy with your fungicide because we've used Headline quite often. We've used Preaxor. We've got Fortix now. I mean, these products are great for almost every disease except for white mold. With white mold, that's where we like Domark just a little bit better. And what we would suggest there, if you've got a white mold problem, is going out with Cobra right before flowering, going with Domark at early flowering, and then going with Domark again at early pod. Well, you need at least a couple of treatments there because where white mold gets into plants is in mainly where those blooms are drying up. That's a, an entry point for white mold, and that's going to happen for quite a while because soybeans are gonna continue flowering and continue continue flowering, trying to get more pod set. And so yeah, you have to continue to protect your soybeans as you go. But most of the time, if we're looking for plant health benefits and maybe just some disease control, for a lot of growers, they're able to treat just one time. And we're gonna do that at full bloom to first pod or R2 to R3 in terms of the stages. Now, when we're doing that one application, it could be done at the same time as a herbicide. It could be done with an insecticide. That tends to be the most common way we see fungicides going on is with an insecticide. And you know you just have to think about how these fungicides move in the plant, what kind of tips you're going to need, spray pressure, those kind of things, because it's different than if you're spraying Roundup. If you're spraying Roundup, you're looking a lot of times at big droplets, low gallons of water. With fungicides, we want to go the opposite way. We'd like small droplets and more gallons of water. Yeah, and it's not like you need a zillion gallons of water. It's not that big a deal. But the point is, we want you to get good spray coverage because fungicides are not very mobile in the plant. They're not very mobile even within a leaf. So you have to have very good spray coverage in order to get the most bang for the buck. Well, when the, the plants are pretty small yet, that's not that difficult to do. For us, we're in 30 inch rows with about half of our beans and we can easily get good coverage there. In our drilled beans, it is a little bit tougher. I would like to see in the range of 10 to 15 gallons of water. And you know, some of the companies are gonna tell you, oh, you have to run 20 gallons of water. You don't have to do that. We've had great gains running 10 gallons of water. It's not that big a deal, but just understand, unless you get great coverage, you're not going to protect every leaf and every part Part of the leaf and then in effect you invested X number of dollars and you did not get that full value out of it. Well when we talk about fungicide use in soybeans it's growing in popularity across our country because it's been paying some really nice returns for the farmers who are doing it. When you look at the farmers that are raising 80 bushel, 90 bushel, 100 bushel yeah, plus soybeans Yeah, but even 40 or 50 bushel beans, Darren, we're getting disease problems, we're getting good gains with some of these treatments. I was just getting into the really high yielding producers around our country. This has been something they've been doing for a long period of time and many of those guys are doing multiple applications of fungicide because it's adding more to their yield at the end of the year. Well, another thing that's adding more yield is controlling our Weed of the Week quickly and effectively. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Looking to maximize yield? QuickRoots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. QuickRoots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. QuickRoots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your QuickRoots today. If you could see how nitrogen loss causes yield loss, you'd fix it. So fix it right with the stabilizer proven to reduce all three ways nitrogen escapes. Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager. It keeps nitrogen in a more readily available form longer. With today's market and environment, it's a high priority to keep your nitrogen on track. To higher yield with Nutrisphere N. Experience matters in farming. 
And when it comes to efficient power, no one has more experience than Case IH. Our industry-leading SCR engine technology has powered over 35,000 pieces of equipment and has over 17 million operating hours in North America alone. It was the right solution from the start, and it's proving itself right again as our new generation of Tier 4B equipment takes to the field. Proven power, proven efficiency, proven in the field. Case IH. Be ready. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. Goss's wilt is one of the worst diseases you can get in corn. The reason why is it's not a fungus, it's a bacteria. You know, when I talk to farmers across the country, we may be talking about Goss's wilt, Stewart's wilt, gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, southern rust. There's lots of disease problems that we can have in corn. But when we look at Stewart's wilt and Goss's wilt, those are completely different because they're caused by bacteria rather than by a fungus. And when we think about that, with any disease that's caused by a fungus, well, we can spray a fungicide and do a fairly decent job if we get the timing right controlling them. But with these bacterial diseases, we really don't don't have good treatment answers. Well, there are bactericides, things like prositic, for example, and there are also people who will run out with copper treatments and things like that to try to stop bacteria, but it's been a lot of hit and miss in that particular arena. Well, I the timing's got to be just absolutely perfect. You got to have low infestation or low pressure, I should say, from the disease. Uh, I don't know. We just haven't seen anything really work on our farm yet. And we had a really extensive trial just a couple of years ago. Well, then we got drought. <laughs> so, so we didn't really have a Goss's wilt issue that yeah. year. But here's the problem with all these diseases. You've got to treat before you have the disease or you can't really stop it. Yeah, but the thing is, when we come back to Goss's wilt, you look at how am I going to treat for this. Well, yeah, you can go out and try a bactericide. We just can't really recommend that in most cases because we haven't seen real good gains there. What it comes back to is you've got to plant the right hybrid. So the reason why we're talking about this today though is we want you to be scouting your fields this summer, seeing if you do have some Goss's wilt. So then you know, hey, when I order my seed corn in August or September this year, the first thing that I have to talk to my seed dealer about is Goss's wilt tolerance. If you've got a hybrid that has Goss's wilt tolerance, you're in pretty good shape. Here's the other problem that we run into a lot of times though, you'll order it in the fall and and you know, since everybody's ordering their seed corn in August and September now, the corn isn't even out of the field yet. And we don't know how much seed corn production there's actually going to be. So what'll happen is usually it's about March and your seed dealer calls you up and says, hey, um, yeah, that number that we ordered, yeah, you can't get that. But hey, you know what? I've got this other great number that I know will work out well for you. Well, I mean, seriously, why didn't you order that number in the first place? The reason why you didn't is it doesn't work out that well for you. Chances are that new one doesn't have the Goss's wilt tolerance that you actually need. My point is just make sure if you need Goss's wilt tolerance, you follow that through all the way and get the right seed and put it in the ground. That's your best method of control. Hey, I would say this though, Brian, the newer hybrids that are coming out do in general have a little better tolerance to Goss as well. Now there are going to be some that have none uh, and, and others that are much better. But what I'm saying is most of the seed corn companies out there really didn't have a whole lot of choice. If you said, I have a Goss's wilt problem, I need your best variety or your best hybrid, they'd say, well, we've got two or three in the whole lineup that are really pretty good. Now many of those companies are saying, hey, we may have six or 10 in our lineup that are really yep. good. So do talk to your seed supplier because this is something that all the breeding programs in North America are really working on. They're trying to get that tolerance better. And then the other thing is we've seen Goss's wilt move from being in that 100 to 110 day hybrid category now we're starting to see some Goss's problems where guys are planting 90 day corn. And you We've know what, seen a lot of that. What, what kind yep. of Goss's tolerance do we have in the 90 day? Well, they've never really looked at it because they just haven't had enough pressure. But in you those know areas. what? We've had more of an issue in recent years because there's been a lot more continuous corn. This is a disease that's going to carry over from year to year. So if you've had a problem in the past, if you've had continuous corn, if you're not doing lots of tillage, then you're just a little bit more susceptible. So these are things we want you to watch for. And in terms of identifying Goss's wilt, it typically 
typically starts up at the upper parts of the plant and then it's going to spread as you get rainfall or if you're irrigating that field that's going to cause that gosses to spread it looks like water soak lesions on the upper portion of the plant it can eventually move all the way down through the plant if you do think you have gosses wilt we really encourage you send some leaves in for analysis just to make absolutely sure and again your best method of control is variety selection going into next year well my bet is you don't need to send in any samples of our weed of the week to get correct identification but we'll show you how to stop it coming up right after this your time is valuable that's why you need a Hagee STS application system Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine contact your Hagee rep today Our Weed of the Week is water hemp. Well, when we think about the pigweed species, uh, Palmer pigweed absolutely is horrible. Uh, fortunately, we don't have a lot of Palmer up in our area yet. Our weed has been water hemp, but either way, whichever they're, one of these pigweed species pig weeds. you have, they're, they're smooth tough. pig weeds. They look almost identical out in the field. The other thing is your control methods are going to be about identical too. It's just, it's difficult to stop this in the broadleaf crops like soybeans. So let's start with control there. Your best way to do it is a three pre strategy. Put a DNA down. That's one of the yellows, Treflan, Sonalan, or Prowl. Add some Metribuzin. That's the old Sencor add authority or valor one of the ppos so if you do that you're going to get 99.9 .9 control on your palmer pigweed or water hemp early in the season then you can follow with a good post treatment but we have to be timely we want to get out there when those weeds are in that two to four inch tall range we don't want to wait till they're in the uh, eight well, the or other part of it the range. other part of it is the best product is flexstar and it's got a 10 month rotational restriction to corn so if you haven't sprayed your flexstar yet this year you're probably going to want to skip that treatment it's getting too late in most areas of the country to put Flexstar on now. But if you don't use Flexstar, which does, by the way, have some residual, then you can go to Cobra or Cadet. Those would be your next best choices for Roundup resistant water hemp. And when we turn to corn, water hemp control is much easier because we have lots of good post emerge options. Still, pre emerge, we want to pick a good product that's going to take out most of those weeds so we don't have to fight it later. You know, historically, Surpass, Harness, Dual, Outlook, they've done a fairly decent job on pigweed. Yeah, maybe but now 80% these, control. But now these combination products where you can use something like Verdict or something like SureStar triple flex uh, or one of the balanced flex products like Corvus uh, we can do a really nice job and get up into that 95% controller better post emerge we like status the best but loudest Callisto impact Armazon are real good Bucktrill is weak on water hemp so that's probably not the way to go and by the way if you throw just a little bit of atrazine in then that will help just about all these products okay and we we don't have a lot of issue with with water hemp but we do see some early in the season we can start off with a pre-emerge treatment of sharp and you can run with a pretty high rate in wheat we can do a nice job there then post emerge we can come back and and you know it's we don't have the greatest choices post yeah but husky Brent. husky's real good because it's got that other component besides the buck troll that's going to be similar to you Calisto. do have to bump that rate up a little bit because the buck troll alone pigweed is not the strength of buck troll and that's one of the components that's in husky you know with wide match it's going to be okay wide um, match is not very good i wouldn't use wide yeah, match it, at all I'd i think it's going to be okay the stinger in there is not bad but you're going to have to add something to it and the challenge is most of the products you would add in wheat are als family products and water hemp is resistant to ALS weeds or ALS herbicides in addition to being resistant to Roundup in much of the, the country. The biggest problem with water hemp is it can put on a million seeds per plant and it can grow two, three, even four inches per day. So it's a very aggressive weed. You've got to get it under control. Use a good pre-program to start. Well, that's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. This time of year, drift is a huge concern when you're spraying. We'll talk about ways to protect yourself and your neighbors in today's Iron Talk. When it comes to drift, there are several factors that lead to more potential for physical drift of your spray particles. Wind is the one that most people focus on, but other than not spraying on windy days, we can't really control that. Knowing that almost every day has some degree of wind, maybe it's 3 or 5 miles per hour, we need to manage it. First of all, your spray nozzles make a huge difference, but your choice is either to get great coverage with fine droplets from something like a flat fan tip, or to get great drift control from a tip that makes coarser and larger droplets. 
Then you look at where those tips are in relation to the crop. The height of your spray boom makes a big difference. If your boom is three or four feet above the crop, you're much more prone to drift. The best recommendation is to have the boom 20 inches above the crop. You still get your full spray pattern and you are the least exposed to wind. The speed you're running through the field is also important. The guideline here is to never run above 15 miles per hour, and if you could go slower than that, it would be even better. Finally, maintain a safe buffer around sensitive crops. Sure, you need to spray up to the edge of the field eventually, but watch all of these factors and minimize your potential for problems. Play it extra safe on the field borders with wind, spray tips, boom height, and sprayer operation speed. Follow these tips, and spray drift can be managed properly on your farm. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. The Case I-8 Spring Sales Event is on now, making it a great time to get the equipment you need for this season. With 0% financing for 60 months on all Farmall and Maxim Series tractors, as well as our complete line of hay tools, you can turn everyday chores into everyday savings. But hurry, the Spring Sales Event ends June 30th, 2014. For more information, ask your local Case I-8 dealer or go to caseih.com slash special offers. I wish I could side dress more than just nitrogen. You can. While side dressing is efficient for nitrogen applications, you can also use that opportunity to apply PK and the micronutrients your crop needs. AgriLiquids Calibrate and MicroLink products allow you to nutritionally balance your side dress application efficiently and economically. Let agriculture liquid fertilizer help you make your next crop a bumper crop. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. Get the most from the genetic potential in your crops, reduce plant stress, and increase yield. BioForge upregulates key genes to keep roots growing and reduce ethylene for improved plant stress tolerance. BioForge mixes well with other products for easy application with every pass through the field. BioForge, progressive grower's choice to improve root growth, reduce crop stress, and increase yield. Make every growing day count with BioForge from Stoller USA. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leaders and Teleslope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with SoilMax. Visit SoilMax.com. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all-new s -Cube commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full-functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but for more agronomic information, we invite you to tune in to Ag PhD Radio. That's on Sirius XM Channel 80 each weekday at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. And don't miss the next episode of Ag PhD TV, where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Why are many farmers reducing tillage? Reduced tillage has shown to increase soil's organic matter levels, reduce erosion potential, improve soil structure, and increase microbial activity and soil life. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.